if you're tired of packing the same old things for lunch whether it's for school or for work this video is for you because i have fantastic recipes not the same old sandwiches and whatever that we used to these are going to be delicious they're going to be healthy they are going to be fun oh my goodness and let's start with the first one which are these gorgeous bread pizzas let me show you the ingredient we're going to need some bread i'll get more slices because we have a lot of children guys and the parents as well and we have some green peppers yellow peppers onions and tomatoes and for the protein we have some minced meat i have some butter i have some mozzarella cheese for the spices we're going to use some uh, garlic powder i have oregano i have paprika and i also have some ketchup simple The hardest thing, the longest thing we're going to do is to just make the minced meat. But the rest, it's a very quick recipe. Let me show you. I know you may be wondering why I would be packing lunches because we are homeschoolers. But homeschoolers do go places, people. You know, we're not just at home. <laughs> so sometimes we'll be gone for sports for the whole day. Sometimes we'll be in church like most of the morning plus lunch. Okay, so we go places, okay? And we pack lunch, okay? Okay. <laughs> and I go to work. <laughs> So anyway, that's that settled. So as the minced beef is cooking, I'll be toasting the bread so that the toppings don't go through. Because I'm, I learned that once, if your bread is not toasted, then you put your toppings, they're just going to melt through it and nobody wants a soggy mini pizza. Our last one is officially my little helper in the kitchen because he's always at hand to help. Uh, he just started school so his classes are quite short and he's yeah he looks forward to helping me in the kitchen to the beef i am adding paprika and oregano once all the water has dried off and a little bit of oil and onions this is also a step that can be done in advance so that your beef is ready when you're ready to start making your pizzas you just remove it from your fridge And you want to stay tuned to the end of this video because I'll show you the recipe that apparently made my husband propose to me as he told me as we were filming this video. <laughs> so I'm excited for you to see what that was. In fact, most of today's recipes can be made in advance during the weekend because they do keep well in the fridge, the salads, most of them basically. Then to the beef, I'm going to add soy sauce and I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce as well. This recipe was inspired by Campus Mama on Instagram. I love her recipes so much. If you just want to follow her, she's at Campus Mama. Fantastic recipes and I, this one was inspired by her. For the simple delicious pizza sauce, I'm adding garlic powder and oregano to ketchup and mixing and that's it.
Now, time to assemble these mini bread pizzas. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to switch on my air fryer to the toast function because I just want to toast them. But you can also use an oven and you can do this on a pan. It's the same thing. On the toasted bread, I'm putting first the sauce and then I'll put some grated cheddar cheese. And then on top of the cheese, I'll put some minced beef and some peppers and tomatoes and onions. And I'll top that off with the grated mozzarella cheese. And that's it. It's a pretty loaded pizza. It has all the food groups. Delicious. They are so easy to assemble and oh my goodness, you can just imagine your child over there at lunch or break time opening their lunchbox and every other child in the playground is going like, oh my goodness, your mom must be the OG. So yeah, you know, okay, we're not doing it for bragging, right? But you know, if you're good, we're good, you know? <laughs> so I'll toast this for five minutes and my goodness, it smells so good in here and look at that. they taste oh my goodness this is so delicious and crunchy and healthful like what now to carry these lunches i'm using these gorgeous colorful tupperware lunch boxes that i got from tupperware town ke on instagram i love them so much because they are the right size and I'm packing grapes and apples together with them to complete the meal. And one thing I love about these Tupperware containers, you guys, is that they are airtight. So my apples are still going to look like apples when people are eating them hours later. They'll still be, no, they would be browned and oxidized. Like, can you even, what? And the lids fit so well. And the containers are leak proof. So I don't have to worry about juices peeling in people's bags. Yes, please. And the taste. Wow. These Tupperware containers will keep my popcorn chicken nice and crunchy without them getting soggy. And as I mentioned, it's not going to pour any melon juice all over. I love the way it has all these compartments. And basically, one thing I've, I've been learning about Tupperware is that whether you're storing your vegetables in the fridge, it just keeps them really nice and fresh, which means you don't have to keep you know, tossing things because they keep going bad. So my plan is to get... A good number of them, especially for storing my vegetables in the fridge, my salads, even the ones that I haven't cooked yet. Because if there's one thing I don't like, it is buying vegetables and then I have to throw them away. So it's definitely worth it. Now, I'm packing this amazingly gorgeous popcorn chicken that everybody loves around here. What? So delicious. And for this, I'm going to need some chicken breast. I have one kilo of chicken breast, some oil for frying, a quarter cup of cornstarch, two tablespoons of yogurt, two egg whites, and two cups of breadcrumbs. And for the seasoning, I'll need some salt, garlic powder, paprika, and that's it. And to serve, you can serve with ketchup, but it's up to you, all right? I've already chopped up my chicken breast into bite-sized pieces. Then I'll separate the egg yolk from the whites because, as I said, all we need are the whites. Then I'm adding these egg whites to the chicken. And together with this, I'll add the garlic powder and the paprika and the yogurt and mix, 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 mix. As I continue mixing, I'll add the cornstarch slowly, basically like in two batches, and make sure it has coated the chicken well. At this stage, my chicken is supposed to have a moist butter. It's not supposed to be dry. It's supposed to be moist. And yeah, 
that will basically the work of the cornstarch is to help the popcorn chicken to be crunchy because everybody wants something crunchy if it's meant to be crunchy it better crunch and if this is the kind of content that you like we love to make motherhood magical over here whether it's fantastic recipes or just doing things that make your life easy convenient and budget friendly you'll want to hit the subscribe button and welcome to the family and you guys all of you who are in the family those who are not yet in the family kindly give me a thumbs up on this video because it really helps youtube to know that we're doing a good job over here and suggest our video to other people so thank you for that thumbs up i appreciate you so much so as a as a hoil <laughs> as the hoil is heating I am putting the chicken pieces into the breadcrumbs to ensure a nice coating and basically that's it. Now we are ready to fry. Fry them for about 5 to 7 minutes depending on how thick you cut them and look at how golden and tasty they look. What? I am packing these with some melon pieces and chocolate covered digestive biscuits because you only live once and yes, we love delicious over here. Now, as long as you're packing something for lunch, it doesn't mean you can't pack something that's like a meal meal. So, for this one, I am making this delicious cashew rice that I've been willing to try and I've been looking forward to try it. And for this, I am going to use two tablespoons of butter cubed, two cups of rice, one chopped onion, one cup of diced carrots, a quarter cup of raisins, whether golden or the brown ones, it's fine, three cups of water or broth, one teaspoon of salt, one cup of roasted cashews, I'm going to roast mine later, one clove of garlic minced, one teaspoon of turmeric, half a teaspoon of cumin, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and one whole bay leaf. That's it. So first, once my onions have fried in some butter, I'll put in all my spices and fry until fragrant. Then I'm going to add all the minced garlic and as that cooks, it's time for me to fry these cashews on a low flame in a pan. So my cashews got a bit burnt as I'm multitasking, but you know what? We are not going to talk about that. Let's talk about how I'm adding carrots and raisins, salt and water to the rice and covering for it to cook.
to balance this meal and to just make things even more delicious, I want to make this delicious cucumber salad by first chopping my cucumbers into thin slices, then my onions thinly as well. And then I'm going to make the juice, the juice that I'm going to use to brine, or I don't know, soak, or I don't know, pickle these cucumbers. For the juice, I'm adding two cups of white vinegar, one cup of sugar, and one cup of plain water into a pot. Then I'll cook this on the stove until all the sugar has dissolved. No need to boil, just need to make sure that the sugar has dissolved. Then I'll pour this over my veggies. It's not really going to cook the cucumbers. It's just going to make them tasty. I don't know the science of it, guys. I just know it just tastes delicious, okay? And once cooled, I'll cover this with some cling film and put it in the fridge. This salad will last you days in your fridge and taste more delicious as time goes by. Now, because my rice is cooked, the last step is to add the cashews to the rice. In hindsight, I think I should have maybe boiled the roasted cashews with the rice. I don't know. Next time I'll try that. Because I felt like they were not really gelling. with They're sort of like sticking out. They're not gelling with the meal. But you can try it either way. Or if you know how to make this, just let me know in the comment section. Because you know we are always learning from each other. And now let's pack this lunch. And this time, the treat is a Mars bar because why not? Uh-huh. Why not? Now, let me show you the recipe that apparently made my husband propose to me. Had I known this, I'd have cooked for him the day I met him. But, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous meal here. So, for this recipe, for the scotch eggs, let me start with the scotch eggs because there's a lot that will be cooking. I am going to need some eggs, obviously, and 500 grams well, maybe about a kilo of sausage, salt and pepper to taste, some paprika, some oregano, half a cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of breadcrumbs and oil for frying. That's it. And because I'm extra, I'm also making a potato salad. I love potato salad. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how much I love potato salad. And for that, I'm going to use one kilo of potatoes that have been peeled and diced into bite-sized pieces, three large eggs that I'm boiling right now, uh, half a cup of chopped red onion, half a cup of chopped pickles, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard or any mustard of your choice, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of sugar, salt and pepper to taste, and you are going to love this salad. I can guarantee you that. So as you have seen already, my eggs are boiling. 
together with the potato or oh, not in the same pot but in different pots and as they are boiling i've been chopping these pickles that i got from the supermarket and because they just take my potato salad to the next i mean you can do without the pickles but i don't think you should then to make the dressing for my my what for the potato salad i'm just mixing the dijon mustard the apple cider vinegar the sugar and salt and always make sure you taste your dressing before you go any further to make sure it is delicious the eggs have already boiled now so let's move on i'll just put the eggs into a pot of cold water to just make sure they cool completely and then peel them and prepare to do the coating which is most of the work now the work is mostly in the coating to coat i'm pouring breadcrumbs into one plate and then wheat in another plate and then i'll beat one egg in another plate for the sausage coating i'll remove all the sausage from the casing the sausages are raw just in case you might wonder yes and then to the raw sausage that is without the coating i'm adding the seasonings of oregano and paprika and it's basically make sure i mix you don't have to add the seasoning but as i said it takes everything to the next level and because here we are extra we are going to do that okay okay then I'm going to make patties with the sausage. I find it easier to coat my oil my hands or coat my hands in oil, whichever, to make the patties because then they don't get so sticky. So now my boiled eggs, did I mention that we peeled the eggs? Please make sure you peel your eggs before you cut them. <laughs> Nobody wants to bite into a scotch egg and find, <laughs> oh my gosh, and find a shell. Please make sure you peel, peel, yes, peel your boiled eggs. Okay. So once my boiled eggs are coated in sausage, I'll first roll them in flour and then in the egg and then in the breadcrumbs and make sure I press down and pat down the breadcrumbs. So that they can stick well okay it is a messy process but oh my goodness it is so delicious after this we just fry guys that simple So I'm just frying these scotch eggs in hot oil for about five minutes on each side or until nice and golden. Okay, and ladies and gentlemen, this is how I landed my husband. The most amazing human being on earth. Had I known this, <laughs> I would have been making them, as I said, much earlier the day we met. But you know what? Good things come to those who wait. And oh my gosh, these scotch whatevers are delicious. Thank you. 
for the potato salad i've left the potatoes to cool down completely then i'll just chop the eggs into really tiny pieces and mix everything together the potatoes the eggs the onions the pickles the dressing just throw them all in there mix nicely and let it chill in the fridge for a bit did i mention how much i love potato salad you guys what Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous egg. So nice. Oh, the layers. So nicely cooked on the inside. And then the layers are, oh, delicious. And I'm so grateful that these containers are airtight. <laughs> because oh, the one thing I love about Tupperware, as, as I mentioned, is that they are airtight. Did I say that? Yes. So nobody in the office will be asking, Nanya me beba my boiro. Okay? We will translate that for the people who are not <laughs> Kenyans. But oh my goodness. Hmm? Yes. So they're airtight. Please get yourself some Tupperware containers from Tupperware Town KE on Instagram. I'm going to put their telephone number down below as well. But the taste, the taste. Oh, yes, please. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And these lunch boxes fit so well. I mean, check it out. See how well it fits into my original Chanel handbag. Yes, it is original. Mm -hmm. These Tupperware boxes have been the MVP for today's video. I have loved, 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 loved just packing my lunches into them. Let me know which one was your favorite recipe out of all these. And we all know these lunches would be incomplete without a drink. And a great healthy drink that would go with this would be these delicious homemade yogurts that we made here. Flavors like you've never heard of. So I'll see you over there. Bye.